and uh, that sorry the uh, the book is by kvs madan pearson publication right it is a very good book so if you want to prepare extensively for paper 1 just go through that book and then rest is done right so uh, that keep that book as a side and then like just see like you know like i'll be doing whatever concepts are covered from different books and then just to prepare you for paper 1 right so just bear with me right and uh, okay so let's begin so the the paper 1 right has 10 chapters right and we are going to like our target is that our syllabus for paper 1 should be complete within 1.5 months okay so we are going to take around 3 to 4 days for each topic right and then we'll try to solve some questions right so that we can just prepare ourselves well and uh, in the end i would conduct a test online only right i would get some questions and then i will conduct a test there and i will ask each one of you to try to attempt that also there will be a series of surprise tests in between right so let's be prepared let's be you know on our toes all the time right so and this is also for economic section so i can have a surprise test any time i can just bombard you with questions any day i feel like right that is that part is with me okay so let's begin with the first chapter it is your teaching aptitude now the trend of paper one has changed over a period of time right so the questions which used to come like you know in 2013 and 2014 they were like okay for example if a student makes a noise in your class what will you do right there were such idealistic questions you know that were asked during the course and uh, the answer was just show your best personality right i would calmly take the student and you know i would calmly take the student after you know the class and talk to him or her about what problem he is facing these are such idealistic questions that were asked and that was like around in 2013 14 15 but after 2015 questions like you know more conceptual right more uh, theoretical questions now that is the trend in paper 1 these days okay so we need to we are left with no other option but to go through the concepts go through different definitions given by different authors different personalities about certain topics in teaching and you know just go in depth of it right so they are preparing you for you know becoming assistant professors or giving you the ability or theoretical knowledge about how you can pursue your teaching career okay so there are different definitions of you know different definitions of education which were given by very popular personalities first was swami vivekananda right and he said that education is a manifestation education is a manifestation of perfection that is already in man so according to swami vivekananda every individual has his or her own qualities and education helps in bringing out those qualities and making the man perfect in that so every individual be it like is good in drawing or is in good in speaking and education only helps develop those skills and makes the individual perfect so this was the definition given by swami vivekananda then you have aristotle right and aristotle stated that education education is a process of creating a sound mind in a sound body so 
education education like according to aristotle he believed that sound mind is as important as sound body a healthy body needs a healthy mind if there is no healthy mind you won't have a healthy body right that's why everybody advises to stay away from stress and so on so they're just working on aristotle's principles right that education helps an individual create a strong mind in a strong in a sound body right third definition was given by john dewey right and according to him education education is the power is the power by which by which man is able to control his environment and fulfill his responsibilities right so education gives an individual the power to control the environment to control what is happening to him or her and also to help him fulfill the responsibilities so john dewey he believed that education is a source of power right so if you're educated you have that power to control the factors around you right and fourth was given by frobel right and according to him education is nothing but a process by which the child develops child develops his or her inner potential right inner potential in a manner so as to participate in the external environment so education in short gives every child every child who will turn into an adult in future so education gives every child the knowledge the capacity to participate in the external environment to communicate with the external environment to give that it gives the confidence to you know like portray to the external environment to fulfill his or her desires so these were four popular definitions which were given by different personalities regarding the education process right so what are the philosophies philosophies that are associated with education what are the philosophies right first philosophy is idealism this is the first philosophy which is given right idealism and the proponents of this philosophy are kant plato swami dayanand right swami vivekananda right and shri aurobindo so they are the proponents of idealism kind of a philosophy and they said that according to this approach education develops a value system a value system right which is nothing but an absolute it is external and it is unchanging so the value system it is very difficult to change a value system so it is a popular notion it is a popular psychology that after the age of 25 it is very difficult to change your opinion because you have developed your own value system right and it is very difficult for someone to just come up to you and say no you start doing this from now on no so according to these scholars idealism education is such a thing right it helps you develop a value system right it helps you develop a an ideological framework with which you are going to see the world right so that is what the philosophy of education is that education helps in your developing a value system which you will be following throughout your life right okay 
Second is naturalism, right? Naturalism is like, it was given by the proponents of naturalism were Tagore, right? It is Rossio and Herbert Spencer. Right? And according to this approach, according to this philosophy, nature, nature gives you, nature is a very important source of knowledge. Right? Nature will impart knowledge to you. So what kind of environment you're staying in, your surroundings, they play a huge role. They play a tremendous amount of role in developing your personality and they will help you develop that you know the kind of you know life you're going to lead or the kind of education you're going to receive right so that is naturalism third is pragmatism this is another philosophy right so according to this pragmatism means you know practice or doing something like doing something practically that is what well, that is what pragmatism right? means so according to this approach education right education is you know can be imparted to an individual when he or she continuously involves himself or herself in an activity you know there are certain sayings that when you do a thing practically, that is more beneficial than what you do theoretically, right? So when you perform a certain, like in our 10th standard, when you, we used to perform an experiment in our chemistry, you know, labs and so on, that was, that was more ingrained in our mind as compared to what we read in our books, right? So that is what pragmatism means. Pragmatism states that education is something which you receive when you're actually doing something practically, when you're just involving yourself in an activity, that is what pragmatism is. And that is how an education should be imparted to an individual. So an individual should have some sort of ability to solve problems, right? You can do two plus two, four. That is fine. That is pragmatism that you can apply, you know, like when you go to a shop, you can add up numbers and you can do it. That's how you learn, you know, that's how you learn about numbers. So that is what pragmatism meant. And the proponents of this approach are John Dewey, right? And Mead. Okay. Next is constructism. Okay, so proponents of this philosophy are Jean Piguet and J. S. Pruna. Okay, so according to this, as the name suggests, education is a construction or a constructive activity, brick by brick. It's Grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, with every moving grade, you learn something new. And that's why you are here. You are postgraduates and you're here, right? Because you've learned something bit by bit, bit by bit since the age of three or four, right? And according to the philosophy constructivism, education is that, right? You cannot just bombard someone with the you know a huge load of information at once no you need to develop an individual's mind bit by bit step by step and that's what constructivism states right then is humanism humanism proponents are Carl Rogers Abraham Maslow. Okay. And according to this approach, according to humanism, you know, education, as the name suggests, makes an individual human. 
right? They make the individuals more cooperative with one another. They make the individuals more tolerant, right? So it is a popular saying that education, I'm not saying a school or formal institutional education, but education in general. Why is it like, how are we segregated from animals? Simply because of education, right? And education gives us, you know, makes us more patient. It's, it makes us more tolerant, right? It makes us more cooperative and it helps us gain a social understanding that how two individuals are different and how can we, you know, cooperate with one another towards a peaceful society. That's what education teaches us. Sixth philosophy is existentialism, right? And in this, they state that each one of you here, right? Each one of you have different experiences in life, right? So that is why we cannot be compared to one another on a similar scale, no, right? Each one of you have learned from their existence since childhood, since our previous experiences, right? So we have learned from them. And that's what education is. For. And education, according to this philosophy, is different for you. It is different from me. We had different economics related teachers, right? So your experience regarding economics would be different as compared to mine. So that is what existentialism is. And last is your, sorry, not last, behaviorism, right? And proponent of behavioralism is thorn-like, right? And according to behaviorism, according to this philosophy, education, education is based on two laws, law of exercise and law of effect. So if you practice, let's begin with the law of exercise. So if you practice one thing again and again, again and again, again and again, that will make you perfect. Right. So if you follow an approach or uh, just take a simple example, if you're fond of filing, right, if you file things one after the other, one after the other, your filing would be perfect. Right. So law of exercise states that if an individual, if an individual practices one thing over and again, over and over again, right, it will make that individual perfect. On the other hand, law of effect, it states that how it states basically determines your future actions based on your previous experiences. So when you were try, like I was very scared of my mother, right? Because like, if I didn't score well, I know I'm getting a good dose of scolding in future. That's why I used to study. Yes, that was the reason. So my past experience was, yes, I have got a good dose of scolding just for scoring low marks. And then in future, yes, I will study just to, you know, based on those previous experiences. Or if you are like, you know, you're participating in competitions because you received an award previously, that will encourage you to practice more and perform better in the future. So your previous experience will determine your future actions. That is what law of effect used to state. Okay. Eighth, we have just taught psychology, right? Just taught psychology is like every individual will perceive a thing differently. Your perception about a certain economic issue might be different as compared to mine, right? So that is what just all psychology states that we learn, we learn from quite a number of factors around us and we develop our minds or we develop our system by those factors which help us perceive things differently. 
right so we all we are belonging from different parts of this country you might have a different experience as a, compared to me right and we will perceive things differently then right so that's what just all psychology is ninth uh, is, excuse yeah. me ma'am what is the word just all just, okay. just this one okay ma'am what does it mean it means basically different perceptions based on perceptions basically okay. perceptive psychology okay okay yeah then you have eclectic eclectic philosophy okay now eclectic philosophy is basically a collection of different good values right so we collect all the good values from different parts right and then we combine them together right so for example we take uh just like in a group in a group of individuals you gather like a child learns you know like he gathers all the good behaviors from each individual to be a perfect individual right so you the eclectic philosophy states that it is a collection of all the good values from different parts from different components in life right and that is what education is right according to this kind of a philosophy so these were certain types of philosophy you can get questions like you know uh, they can give you a definition or they can just write two lines on it and they can ask you to identify which type of philosophy we are talking about or they can give you proponents and they can ask you to match them right which proponent or who belongs to which philosophy and so on so these are certain kinds of questions that can be asked from this portion so please remember that uh in this case in paper 1 there are 50 questions right so five questions from each topic will be asked right so five questions will be asked from teaching aptitude that are let like that that is sure right so prepare yourself accordingly okay then coming on to the forms of education so what are the forms of education we have formal which i think all of you have experienced including me we have informal same as the case for this one and then we have non formal can someone just guess about the non formal uh, type of education non formal form of education just a guess i guess it would be something that we learn from our everyday life from our experiences or from from our elders that is an or... informal kind of education okay yeah that's fine anybody else okay so basically in uh, like we'll come to non formal first uh, later formal education is something which is planned right the curriculum is organized right and this is imparted in formal institutions such as schools or colleges and so on right so yes so if you are pursuing a post graduate degree you are a part of formal institution informal institution as ramandeep stated that it is an indirect kind of knowledge which we gather from our friends and family our parents teach something every day our friends teach us something every day that is an informal kind of an education system right and it is based on your experiences basically but non formal kind of an education system it is becoming quite popular these days you know like it is an open kind of a system a child is free it is an institution but a child is free to learn anything he or she wants there is no properly you know there's no strictly defined curriculum right if a child has an interest in literature 
he can read anything he wants to he can uh, you know like write anything he wants to there won't be any fixed you know half yearly exams or you know final exams or semester exams no it is something that gives a child a learner basically the freedom to learn anything he or she wants to right and in this case teachers play a role of you know a facilitator they will tell or they will guide you if you know where or they will actually give their feedback whether or not a child is going in the right direction or not so there's this school like i'm sure most of you must have heard of it uh this is uh like isha foundation i think by sadguru right they operate a kind of a non formal institution oroville in oroville right they yeah so that is like an, a flexible open system they do not have that okay chapter 1 teaching aptitude chapter 2 research aptitude chapter 3 reading comprehension nothing like that they have it okay if you have an interest in you know solving your uh, mathematical questions first you maths right we are not going to grade you in english or hindi or punjabi or you know math or you know science nothing if you are okay with maths read maths learn maths that's it that is a non formal institution and these kind of institutions are now becoming very popular right okay so but we also need to understand the state of education in the indian context right so we have a very popular policy your national education policy that was given in 1986 okay so objectives so this is one comprehensive plan that was designed by the then government of india to pursue or to help develop you know the quality of living or help develop the quality of human resource in india okay so the objectives of this policy were first there has to be an all round material and spiritual development okay so there has to be every child must develop be it regarding the curriculum be it regarding a social being right second is cultural orientation and develop of development of interest every individual every child you know with the education process must develop some sort of interest so you were all learning english hindi maths you know science social science and so on in your school but now at this point you are doing for economics you are pursuing economics so your education has helped you reach here right so you so that you have developed an interest now in one small part of a huge education bundle right third is your scientific awareness you are aware education will help individuals be aware of their surroundings scientific means about your surroundings right so scientific awareness fourth is your national cohesion ma'am yes good morning ma'am good morning ma'am please use some hindi acha i hope like somebody is or everybody is fluent with hindi whoever no, but is some words some words used in hindi i am not comfortable with english lecture okay okay not a problem theek hai so national cohesion basically uh, i'll try my best okay so you can stop me in future as well right okay so yeah national cohesion means like keeping the you know national feelings together so aajkal ye chal raha hai na national interests and you know all the binaries between nationals and anti nationals and so on so they are basically targeting you know the education system so according to the education policy national education policy 1986 
the foremost, the first responsibility of education is ki nation ko ek saath rakhna hai. Right? A country ko ek saath rakhna hai. That is the objective of your national education policy. Right? Fifth, independence of mind and spirit. जो सोचना चाहो सोच आज के अखबारे मत पढ़ना आज का कोई इंस्टाग्राम मत देखना लॉजिकल इंडियन मत देखना कुछ मत देखना ठीक है बट एजुकेशन का पहला ऑब्जेक्टिव शुड बी इंडिपेंडेंस ऑफ माइंड एंड स्पिरिट एक आप जो सोचना चाहो आप सोच सकते हो राइट कोई आपको कुछ नहीं कहेगा विच इज नॉट ट्रू एट प्रेजेंट ओके बट स्टिल ये हमारी नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी का ऑब्जेक्टिव है सिक्स इज योर ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट राइट तो इसीलिए अंडर दिस नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी इट वाज मेड कंपलसरी दैट एवरी चाइल्ड इज इंटाइटल्ड यू नो हर बच्चे को टिल द एज ऑफ फोर्टी राइट स्कूल जाना है should go to school right so this comes this education up to the age of a compulsory primary education comes under national education policy okay seventh is increasing research yesterday a trend chala tha twitter pe I don't know. I'll give you such lame examples. Now, I'll give you many examples during the course. That uh, uh, recently, an Indian origin, okay, your uh, CEO is made on Twitter, ka, right? And that's what it is. He like we are educating. हम रिसोर्सेस हमारे यहाँ के इन्वेस्ट कर रहे हैं अपने बच्चों पर. And then they are going to another nation to serve them. So there is something very wrong. happening in our country which is actually pushing the manpower or pushing people outside yahan pe sabko canada jana hai yahan pe sabko australia jana hai sabko us jana hai right kyunki yahan pe kuch to kami hai right so that is what was designed as an objective of your national education policy right and Eighth, education for equality. Right, education will help in you know removing all the differences. Be it your gender differences, your caste differences, your class differences. Education will help that every individual को हम equally देखें. That's what education. is for right and that was an objective another objective of your national education policy okay so this was about education right so yeah okay so i'll stop here right do me ko teaching aage bhi padhana tha but i'll still stop here and uh, i'll move on to economics now so if you want to take a break for 5 minutes please let me know otherwise we can move forward with it okay should we take a break yes ma'am so just take a break for 5 minutes and then we'll meet back here right okay ma'am okay ma'am okay ma'am
Okay, welcome back. Right. Everybody's there, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, beginning with the economics portion, and it has 10 units basically, right? And uh, like, you know, the first unit is microeconomics, then we'll move on to macro statistics. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you explain uh, any economic theory? Any, any economic, economic system? Any economic theory in France? Yeah, the like uh, Stegelberg models, uh, then the Burton and uh, these are these models is uh, very struggle. So therefore, if we uh, explain that 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 was one of the useful. Ones. Yes, yes. So we'll be coming to that. Don't worry. So as we proceed with the course, we'll be coming to that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay. So let's start with the basics first. So concept of demand, right? Okay. So uh, I'm sure like, I hope most of you are comfortable with this concept. So this will be more of, you know, asking things from you, right? So this concept was given in 1980s right, by Alfred Marshall, okay, in the book, Principles of Economics. So according to Alfred Marshall, what are, like, what is demand actually, right? What is demand? So according to him, there are five important characteristics. Ma'am? Uh, yes? Ma'am, 1890, you have written Concept of sorry, 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 1890s. Yes, it's sorry. Here, yeah, 1890s. Right, thank you. And uh, let's move on to five characteristics of demand. Right, so, like if I say that okay, I have to buy Antilla, right, I will go and buy Antilla in, in Mumbai, but no, that is not possible. That was like, I do not have the ability to pay in that, right? I don't have the desire as well. I don't have the willingness. Just because I am saying that I want to buy Antilla doesn't mean that that is characterized as demand. Ki wo meri demand ho nahi. Right? So demand, agar aap koi cheez, jase koi bhi commodity lete ho, demand How do you call it as your demand is first you should desire it. Right? We don't desire, like I don't desire kadu. So that is not my demand. Right? Then second is willingness. You must have the willingness to spend on that commodity. Jab tak aap nahi chaate ho us pe spend karna, tab tak wo aapka demand nahi hoga. Right? So, ek commodity ki demand tabhi hogi jab you have the willingness. Right? To go to a movie theater and watch a movie. Right? You are willing to spend, right? Uh, 150 rupees for a ticket. That is why it is a demand. Right? Then is ability to pay. You must have the ability to pay for that commodity. Mujhe to bank bhi loan nahi dega. Agar main bolu ki mujhe mbani ka ghar khareed na nahi. Thik hai. So I do not have the ability to pay. So that is not my demand. Okay. Then is price. Price is another factor which determines your demand. Right? And then your time. Right? So if, for example, let's just say, uh, take an, any example that, okay, you're taking like, uh, okay, people who have cleared UGC net, JRF, and have pursued PhDs, right? They will not take the 2021 batch now. 
राइट right? सो so, जिन्होंने क्लियर कर लिया है या जिन्होंने लाइक पीएचडी भी खत्म कर ली है वो आज की डेट पे कोचिंग नहीं लेंगे ठीक है उन्होंने अपने टाइम पे ली होगी राइट टाइम इज अनदर फैक्टर दैट इज लाइक दैट डिटर्मिन द डिमांड राइट फॉर एग्जाम्पल अनदर एग्जाम्पल इज लाइक टेक द केस ऑफ से सीजनल फ्रूट्स और वेजिटेबल्स right so the time to consume your spinach and everything is today is in this weather right if somebody asks you to consume it in summers no that is not your demand so time also plays a huge factor in determining your demand until and unless all these five characteristics are not fulfilled it will not be a demand right so this checklist must be fulfilled okay just a second right hmm okay next is the demand function right so quantity demanded is a function of these factors price okay let's start relationship between price and quantity demanded positive or negative yes yes negative ma'am negative right so as the price increases quantity demanded falls right then relationship between income and demand quantity demanded positive or negative Ma'am, in normal uh, goods is positive relation, as yes. in inferior goods is negative relation. Okay, correct. What about given goods? Given goods के साथ अगर if you are taking given goods. तो इनकम एंड डिमांड का रिलेशनशिप पॉजिटिव होगा कि नेगेटिव होगा मैम पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव होगा क्यों क्योंकि मैम जैसे प्राइस उसका इंक्रीज होगा तो उसकी डिमांड भी उसी हिसाब से इंक्रीज हो जाएगी अगर मैं कहूँ अब मैं एक चीज कहूंगी कुछ जो हम बाद में करेंगे मैं एक चीज कहूंगी गिफिन गुड्स आपका नॉर्मल गुड्स में आते हैं कि इंफीरियर गुड्स में इंफीरियर गुड्स में आते हैं मैम नॉर्मल गुड्स में नहीं आते यस इंफीरियर गुड्स आते हैं और इंफीरियर गुड्स के साथ क्या रिलेशन है नेगेटिव यस ठीक है बट एक चीज आपको ध्यान रखनी है गिफिन गुड्स का जो कांसेप्ट है ये तो मैंने बस अंडरस्टैंडिंग पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से कराया था पर जो गिफन गुड्स yes. का कॉन्सेप्ट जो आता है वो प्राइस से आता है आपने ठीक कहा बिल्कुल ठीक कहा आपने उसका हम जो कॉन्सेप्ट बताते हैं वो एक्सेप्शनल केस जो बताते हैं वो प्राइस के फैक्टर से बताते हैं वो इनकम के फैक्टर से नहीं बताते हैं ठीक है बट स्टिल हमें ये भी ध्यान रखना है दैट ऑल गिफन गुड्स ऑल गिफन गुड्स are inferior goods right but but not all inferior goods are goods are given goods theek hai matlab aapka jo venn diagram hoga wo aisa hoga ki ye given goods hai ठीक है सारे गिफिन गुड्स इंफीरियर गुड्स होते हैं बट सारे इंफीरियर गुड्स गिफिन गुड्स नहीं होते हैं देर आर सर्टन गुड्स 
जो कि सिर्फ इंफीरियर रहते हैं ओके okay? और जो ये वाले जो गुड्स हैं ये वाले जो गुड्स हैं इनका रिलेशनशिप इनका प्राइस एंड क्वांटिटी रिलेशनशिप क्या रहेगा पॉजिटिव या नेगेटिव जो हमारे ये वाले गुड्स हैं ये वाले जो गुड्स हैं इनका रिलेशनशिप नेगेटिव मैम नेगेटिव रहेगा करेक्ट और जो ये वाले गुड्स हैं इनका रिलेशनशिप पॉजिटिव पॉजिटिव राइट सो ये आपको ध्यान रखना है राइट right? ओके सो बेसिक ये लाइक दिस इज लाइक द बेसिक थिंग जहां पे हम गलतियां कर सकते हैं इन आवर एग्जामिनेशन ठीक है सो यू हैव टू टेक केयर बिकॉज अगर आपका एग्जाम कंसेप्चुअल आए तो फिर ये आपको बेसिक चीजें आपको ध्यान में रखनी पड़ेंगी ठीक है देन इज योर प्राइस ऑफ रिलेटेड गुड्स रिलेटेड गुड्स सो अगर आपके आपके गुड्स सब्सटीट्यूट हैं राइट तो इंक्रीज इन प्राइस ऑफ से गुड एक्स विल लीड टू वॉट चेंज इन क्वांटिटी ऑफ गुड वाई इंक्रीज या डिक्रीज इंक्रीज इंक्रीज राइट देन कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री गुड्स complementary goods decrease decrease increase in price of x will lead to decrease in quantity of y okay then you have tastes and preferences right so if there are favorable tastes if the tastes are favorable then there is a positive relationship so if like there are favorable tastes then you will demand that uh, demand that commodity if you have unfavorable tastes you will not demand that quantity then is your advertise advertisement outlay right so this is from the seller's point of view right so if a seller increases his or her expenditure in advertisements the demand will increase and vice versa next is your future expectations regarding the price so agar aap expect karte hain ki price kal increase hoga to aapka demand at present kya hoga less increase कंज्यूम करते हैं लाइक आई डोट नो इफ यू रिमेम्बर फोर टू फाइव इन बैक when we knew that okay petrol like there used to be a one day before announcement that petrol prices will increase tomorrow so usi din aaj ke din hi puri line lag jati thi petrol pump pe ki people ma'am in perishable goods pe kaise kaam karta hai ye wala point see perishable goods are an exception us pe nahi kaam karega basically so agar aapka time period bahut ho factor in karna padta hai ठीक है कि ठीक है बंदे अगर प्याज के रेट बढ़ रहे हैं नेक्स्ट सीजन में दे कैन नॉट स्टॉक अनियंस लाइक दैट आज की डेट पे द प्राइसेस ऑफ टोमेटोज आर रीचिंग हाई एंड राइट बट पीपल कैन नॉट स्टोर टोमेटोज लाइक दैट राइट सो दैट इज अ पेरिशेबल गुड तो ये जो कॉन्सेप्ट है ये पेरिशेबल गुड्स पे इतना वैलिड होता नहीं है बेसिकली है ना देन इज नंबर ऑफ कस्टमर्स इन द मार्केट so if there are more customers right then 
your demand will increase and vice versa right okay so moving on to your law of demand now this was given by alfred marshall right and he stated that this law is a partial equilibrium analysis i'll come back to this point but before that let me just state the law of demand law of demand states that there is an inverse relationship right between price of a commodity and quantity demanded of it right keeping other things the same so why my question for you is why do we call law of demand a partial equilibrium analysis because it does not uh, uh, indulge into uh, uh, other aspects which affect demand exactly very good so we are not taking into account other factors like income or price of related goods we are assuming that they are constant and what is the term for that cetrus paribus exactly very nice yeah. right so that is why because of this we call law of demand as a partial equilibrium analysis okay so how do we represent law of demand you can graphically represent it right using the demand curve and you can represent it in a tabular form using demand schedule okay so a demand curve is a downward sloping curve with price on the y axis and quantity on the x axis whereas a demand schedule is a tabular structure like this one okay but then one thing you must take into account here is that the demand curve and demand schedule they do not tell you what the exact consumer demand or con, you know what price or consumer demand is prevailing in the market no they will not tell you that rather wo aapko batayenge ki agar by chance market mein price say x ho jata hai to y demand hogi agar z ho jata hai to a demand hogi nahi बस यही बताते हैं दे डू नॉट टेल यू अबाउट द एक्चुअल प्राइस ये सिर्फ दे आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंट पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ डिमांड राइट एट ईच पॉसिबल प्राइस रियलिटी नहीं बताते हैं सिर्फ एक एस्टिमेट बताते हैं राइट नेक्स्ट मार्केट डिमांड राइट मार्केट डिमांड इज अ हॉरिजोंटल समेशन ऑफ इंडिविजुअल डिमांड so we calculate our individual demands add them up and then that will be our market demand right so higher the population more will be the market demand so if they say that just if they ask you a basic question like assertion market demand curve is flatter as compared to the individual demand reason is because of horizontal summation of individual demands okay so what are the reasons for downward sloping demand curve first is law of dmu right law of dmu states that as you consume one additional unit of a commodity the utility derived from it will fall so if i consume say 
I'll give you a very basic example. If I say I consume one chocolate, it will give me 20 utils of satisfaction. If I consume a second chocolate, okay, higher satisfaction, but yes, not as much as the first unit, it will give me 18. If I consume a third chocolate, probably 13. If I consume a fourth chocolate, probably say seven, right? And if I consume fifth chocolate, zero, sixth chocolate, probably I'll puke it all out, right? So law of DMU is that as and when you consume, keep consuming one additional unit of a commodity, the utility derived from each consecutive unit will keep on declining. But the condition here is, condition here is that I am consuming all the units at one particular time. It is not like I consume the first chocolate today and I'll consume the second chocolate two months after. No, it will be one after another in a same time period. That's where the law of DMU holds. Okay. Second is your income effect. Okay, so income effect, though this was not discussed by Marshall, income effect was not given by Marshall, but still it holds true for determining the reason for downward sloping demand curve. So income effect states that if there is a fall in price, right, Fall in price hogi, to aapki real income increase hogi. Real income is calculated by your nominal income divided by price. So, agar price kam ho ra hai, to real income increase hogi. Real income increase hogi, matlab aap all commodities. You can consume or you can purchase more number of commodities now. So this will increase your purchasing power. And ultimately, it will lead to increase in demand. Okay. Then we have a substitution effect, right? So substitution effect. So Marshall explained the law of demand curve only using the substitution effect. So if there is a fall in price, right? Your good will become cheaper as compared to other commodities. And as a result, your consumption will increase. Okay. Then is different uses of a commodity. Okay, so if there is a fall in price, then you can use that commodity to different other uses as well. Can you just give me one example from your daily life? Yes, yes. Just think over it. There must be something Okay, so who all are fond of gajar ka halwa? <laughs> so this is a season of carrots. Now the prices of carrots will, you know, like fall. And not only you'll use carrots for your uh, salad consumption, but then there will be gajar ka halwa being made, probably carrot puddings, probably in vegetables, like cooking mixed vegetables and so on. So carrot is being now put to different other uses, right? Just because it its price has reduced. 
So when a price of a commodity falls, it can be put to different other uses and as a result, your demand increases. Okay. And then last is your size of the market, right? So if the price falls, then more people will be attracted to it. Right? And as a result, your demand increases. So any example in this case? Yes, people, you need to relate it with your daily life. Only then you will, it will be easier for you to understand. Yes. For example, the market for geo, right? So the price reduced, they offered internet services at a very low rate, which attracted many people to join the network and which ultimately increased the demand of it, okay? But then there are exceptions to the law of demand. So what are the exceptions to the law of demand, right? First exception is the Veblen effect, and it is the concept of conspicuous consumption. So this concept was given by Thorsten Veblen, right? And it said that a person, an individual, will consume the commodity more with a increase in price. For example, antiques price of antiques right its price is huge that is why the demand for it increases that is a case of conspicuous consumption right and as discussed before the second exception to the law of demand is your giffen goods right and giffen goods state that there is a positive relationship between your price and quantity demanded. Now, the question is, why does a given good, why does a given good, you know, arises out of it? So, it is usually like applicable to a very low income population, right? This concept, the concept of given goods is applicable to either means very low income, one, one with very low income, right? That is, they are so poor that the entire income is spent on basic necessities. That is for their survival, right? So whenever there is a fall in price of a good, right? So what they feel is that, okay, the fall in price has resulted into a rise in real income. So this rise in real income, they will think that why don't we invest it in another commodity which we haven't consumed ever, right? So they spend this additional real income plus, plus the income which they were you know, willing to spend on the necessity good, on different commodity. So what they're doing is with the fall in price, they are reducing the quantity demanded as well. Okay, no. Agar hamara price kam hoi gaya hai and hamari real income badhi gai hai, kyu na hum thoda sa aur paisa dal ke koi nai commodity kreed lein? Right? So that is why, that is how the concept of Giffen goods originated. Okay. Third is ignorance on the part of the buyer or consumer. So you are consuming a commodity without asking, you know, the price or getting a price quotation from different other areas. Then expectations. If you are expecting the price to increase in future, increase further in future, your quantity demanded will increase at present as well. So if you are anticipating that, okay, price of petrol will go beyond 100 rupees. So 
even at 98 point something, you were consuming a lot of it. You were just filling up your tanks. And then war. War is like a fear that is instilled in individuals, which will make them, you know, consume more at present. Okay. Everybody is good with this one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let's move forward. Then comes your bandwagon effect. The bandwa bandwagon effect and snob effects. There are two effects which are very popular. And uh, so bandwagon effect is something like if a commodity is in fashion, the demand is, is going to increase. Right? Just because like the word, the keyword here is fashion. Right? So if it is in fashion, everybody is going to increase. Uske paas hai, to mere paas bhi hona chahiye. Right? So that is a bandwagon effect. That is how it works. So how did, you know, like India being not that, you know, like the culture of smartphones, the culture of branded clothing, right? So how did it come about in India? Just because of this bandwagon effect. People started consuming it. And hence, it, you know, compiled to a larger and larger demand for multinational corporations. So bandwagon effect, the entry of multinational corporations in India, the reason behind that was the bandwagon effect. That we as a population are so influenced by others that yes, it made or it gave success to these huge brands, right? Then is your snob effect, right? So snob effect is basically like, okay, I should have an exclusive commodity. That's what a snob effect means, right? So a thing with prestige value, if everybody has it, I will not have it. I should have an exclusive commodity. That's what the snob effect is, okay? So something which is different from what everybody is having. Okay, then we come on to some. Excuse me. Yeah. Hanji, ma'am, I'm always confused between uh, Veblen effect and snob effect. So Veblen effect and snob effect are actually one and the same thing. Okay. It is just a modified word. It is not even a modified version. Snob effect is stating the Veblen effect. That's all. Please ek word dobara explain kar diye aap ye wala effect. The bandwagon or snob effect? And yes, ma'am. Achha. So bandwagon effect jo hai, bandwagon effect basically aapka pata hai ye jo dono phenomena hai. Aapko ek cheez jo yahan pe dhyan rakhni hai, wo hai ki ye dono phenomena psychological hai. ठीक है इसका प्राइस से कोई लेना देना नहीं है इसका और किसी चीज से कोई लेना देना नहीं अगर सब कंज्यूम कर रहे हैं चाहे प्राइस हाई हो या लो हो हम भी कंज्यूम करेंगे दैट इज अ बैंड वैगन इफेक्ट आई जस्ट सो आई एम नो ऑफेंस टू द आईफोन यूजर है आई डोंट नो नो डोंट टेक एनी ऑफेंस है राइट बट everybody is having an iphone right <laughs> so i don't want to start a debate on which is better iphone or android <laughs> but still like it is like yeah bluetooth nahi hai yaar <laughs> okay <laughs> so so that is like everybody wants that because just because that is in fashion okay <laughs> don't take any offense please i'm sorry <laughs> okay so yeah so just because it is in fashion yes everybody wants it okay for example everybody wants to consume branded clothing everybody wants to have that tick mark or adidas symbol or reebok symbol or something written on their shoes simply because it is in fashion right go to any university the amount of peer pressure people face ki bhai kya kapde pehne hai kya ye pehna hai kya wo pehna hai that is nothing but bandwagon effect and we all have experienced that at one stage in our life right 
अनादर थिंग इज स्नॉब इफेक्ट इज कि मेरे पास सबसे अच्छा होना चाहिए बाकी किसी के पास नो बडी शुड हैव दैट कमोडिटी right people with two seater cars i don't I, i don't even find that utility <laughs> right so i probably ramandeep would be relating with me here like <laughs> i hope she does yes ma'am so when i see two seater cars in chandigarh and i'm like what is going on why do you get to very mere paas se to uthai leti hai na jo bhi hai theek hai so that is like snob effect is i should have a i have an exclusive commodity that nobody should have hmm. right so art sector ki okay. idea agar lagani hai that is your snob effect theek hai bandwagon effect is um, there was yeah um there was one question that i read somewhere i don't know if it was uh, from previous year question papers unhone kuch rare rare paintings ki example deke pucha tha ki it will be affected by veblen or snob हम्म, सो बेसिकली जो वहां पे क्या होता है जैसे आपका स्नॉब इफेक्ट मैंने जैसे बोला कि आपका द ओनली डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू इज कि जो स्नॉब इफेक्ट है ना वो साइकोलॉजिकल है ठीक है अब इसमें आपका क्या है जो आपकी एंटी पेंटिंग्स है राइट उनका इफेक्ट क्या होता है कि वो प्राइस के ऊपर बहुत ज्यादा करते हैं ऑप्शन होती है उनकी यस राइट right? तो उनका प्राइस से रिलेशन काफी आ जाता है तो आंसर आपका वेबलन होगा भी आपका प्राइस से रिलेटेड होगा जब डिफरेंस जब आप एक कमोडिटी को जो एक्सक्लूसिव कमोडिटी को आप प्राइस के टर्म्स में जज करोगे तो आपका आंसर वेबलन इफेक्ट होगा जब आप उसको साइकोलॉजी साइकोलॉजी के उस पर वो टेस्ट करोगे तब आपका आंसर इफेक्ट ओके ठीक है मैम ठीक है यस ओके सो शाल वी मूव फॉरवर्ड श्योर मैम यस मैम यस ओके ओके सो व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन योर चेंज इन डिमांड एंड चेंज इन क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड ठीक है तो जब भी हम कहते हैं दैट देयर इज अ चेंज इन क्वांटिटी डिमांडेड वी आर जस्ट टेकिंग इनटू अकाउंट द प्राइस okay the price of a good but when we take into account the change in demand when we say there is change in demand then we say that we are taking into account factors other than price right isme sirf price hoga change in quantity demand did me and change in demand may there will be factors other than price okay change in quantity demanded will lead to a movement on the demand curve whereas change in demand will lead to a shift of the demand curve theek hai agar hum increase in demand ke rahe hain then there will be a rightward shift but agar hum decrease in demand ke rahe hain there will be a leftward shift okay this implies ki isi price pe आपकी क्वांटिटी अगर यहां थी अब न्यू क्वांटिटी आपकी सॉरी सॉरी क्वांटिटी पहले यहां थी अब न्यू क्वांटिटी आपकी इंक्रीज हो गई है इंप्लाइंग दैट कंज्यूमर्स आर विलिंग टू बाय मोर ऑफ द सेम कमोडिटी एट द ओरिजिनल प्राइस दैट इज योर इंक्रीज इन डिमांड एंड डिक्रीज इन डिमांड कहते हैं कि एट दैट सेम प्राइस now the consumer is demanding less okay and then you have sorry and then you have expansion or contraction in demand which is change in quantity demanded so if the price falls 
and quantity increases this means like this your quantity is increasing so this will be expansion but when your quantity is decreasing due to increase in price this will be contraction okay yes sir okay so finally in this concept we have a short concept that is demand for durable goods now durable goods are like which go on for years and years and years your machinery probably your television sets which you do not change much often right ki chalate jao those are durable goods so those goods for those goods the prices are not very volatile just because you can store them like uh, someone said that okay so prices of tomato like perishable goods perishable goods cannot be stored that is why their prices are very volatile today if prices of tomatoes are sky high tomorrow it will be lower right simply because their prices are volatile and also consumption of durable goods can be postponed if today like okay you want to consume you want to purchase a television you can wait for an amazon great indian festival sale right so you can postpone the consumption you can postpone for a better price in future right but you cannot be like okay mai sab agar aaj ke rate pe vegetables are costing very high you cannot be like kitna hai mai teen din bhook ke reh lungi ya reh lunga and then i'll consume it after three days when the prices will be low no right and derived demand is when you're not directly demanding of you know a a source basically i cannot call this a commodity but a source so labor the demand for labor is a derived demand so if today someone has to purchase knitted sweaters right so demand is very high in winters for knitted sweaters right so the demand for labor is also very high in this case okay so this was your concept of demand anybody with any query or anything no ma'am no no ma'am okay so any doubt in paper 1 or paper 2 or anything uh ma'am can you please repeat the book that you mentioned for paper 1 in the yeah. starting so it is by kvs madan Pearson publication. Just try getting the latest edition of it, right? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So I'll stop the lecture here. I'm tomorrow class timing. Same. Eleven thirty.